bringing the people behind our food to life. Today is the Tour de Hives. We've had dozens of people coming through our backyard, touring our hives, and there's, I think, at least another dozen locations throughout the Portland metro area uh, where people can go to visit, see different hive designs, see different setups, and learn about how other people are doing it in their backyard. So that come spring 2011, maybe they can start their own hive. So in the corner, we have what's called a horizontal top bar hive, also called a Kenyan top bar hive. It's a, a hive that's used a lot in Africa and other developing places. Uh, it's generally a, a low-cost alternative to traditional methods. It uses top bars inside, top bars with, with no foundation, with nothing in there to force the bees uh, to build in a certain way. It allows the bees to build their comb how they want it, uh, where they want it, and, and when they want it. Uh, and so it's, it's certainly a growing trend in sustainably minded cities, especially places like Portland. It's a very easy hive to work in. You don't have to lift any heavy boxes. It's also a great educational tool because it has a window on the other side. And, you know, if you've got kids, it's a great option for your backyard. The other style next to it is a French style hive called a Waray hive. It was developed by a guy named Abe Waray. And he looked at around 300 hive designs and in the mid early 1900s and developed this. He thought it was the perfect hive for everyone and that you know, it was the best option for the bees and the beekeeper. And it's made to better mimic the internal dimensions of a tree cavity or a cavity that a feral hive might choose to live in. Uh, the other major difference is that you add boxes to the bottom rather than on top. They're significantly lighter than the more common style next to it, which is called a Langstroth hive. Uh, it's the, definitely the most common style in the world and definitely the United States. It's been used since around the 1850s, and it's used by just about every commercial beekeeper uh, in our country. I started beekeeping three years ago. A honeybee flew into our kitchen. We were living in an apartment in, in southeast Portland, and I decided to save the bee. So I, I heated up a plate for it. I kind of pushed the bee onto the plate, and I put a drop of honey on it. And I watched as this bee rushed for the honey, started drinking it, uh, started cleaning herself and fanning her wings and clearly she was energized and I took her out to the front porch and she kind of looked up at me and then spiraled off into the sky and then I think it was later that day or the next day my wife was leaving for work and saw dozens of bees smashing into our front uh, screen door trying to get into our apartment because that bee had told her friends you know there's a great source of honey here you all should should come on check it out so then I had to learn more about honeybees and, and how that happened and, and how she told her friends about the honey. <laughs>